So what I want to share with you today is the, my personal story and that of my startup. So I'm Jeanne Sharipova and I'm a founder of Dish FM. Uh, so let's start from the beginning. I graduated from London School of Economics with the first uh, honor degree and an award for academic achievement. And I wanted to do uh, one thing. I wanted to develop new products. And I asked myself where I can learn that. And uh, I thought maybe Procter & Gamble is a very good start for that because it's a very big company with a long history of innovation, etc. So I uh, joined Moscow office and was responsible for Eastern Europe there. Soon enough, uh, I moved to uh, regional headquarters and started to develop uh, new products for the Central Eastern Europe, Middle East and Africa, traveling a lot in that region and actually really enjoying my work. But while I was enjoying Geneva and uh, all, all, the, all these uh, opportunities, I realized that I actually uh, feel that I need more freedom more freedom for my ideas, which, are, uh, which wouldn't be um, limited by the, by the industry I'm working on or by, the, by anything. Or, and I also wanted uh, more freedom for decision making. I actually felt that uh, I shouldn't ever execute a decision I'm, I don't agree with. And I don't want to learn this skill. I want to execute only the decisions I agree with. I want, I want to be convinced or I want to talk, to argue, to, you know, find the decision and then only to execute it. And I also felt that I want to work somewhere where bringing a new product to life would requir require several months, not several years. And, that, and thinking of that, I realized that I want to be an entrepreneur. And actually, that felt like this. I mean, if you look there, this is a tiny spot over there. This is actually me. I actually jumped over uh, fr from 220 meters or 700 feet. And decision to uh, quit corporate world actually felt the same, like jumping off a cliff and uh, worse than that, because I felt it every single day after the decision. So I was still jumping and jumping and jumping every day. But I will, t I will have to tell you that this worth it. And the main conclusion I can do from this experience is that don't be afraid to lose the things you already have because they are actually with you. They are built based on your skills, on who you are. And you can't lose these things. You can't lose who you are. And only be afraid of not trying to do what you really want because there is no other way to figure that out other than try it. This is very simple. So I went back from Geneva to Moscow and decided to enjoy it to the full. So I decided to go out to a lot of good restaurants because Moscow is very good and very um, famous for that. And I think I, I visited 70 something restaurants in, in several months and I was a bit disappointed because only around 30% of the dishes were awesome and like the Half of the dishes I tried, they were mediocre. Like I can cook myself better. Why should I go to a restaurant then? And in like, in some, of the, in some cases, they actually, the dishes were so awful, like no one should be able to charge money for that. <laughs> and I was like, why this happens to me? And I found out that I'm not alone in that experience. And just, it's not like I'm an unlucky person. It's just, uh, this is a normal uh, human experience with restaurants. And, uh, we as friends like, had an idea that, okay, if all the people go to restaurants, why they can make pictures of their food and vote for dishes, and then we all can know what's best to order. That sounds very nice, this should work. So we decided, okay, not to wait. We raised money, developed the prototype, and launched an open beta. And then, after we launched it, we figured out it is successful as a niche product. Because there are uh, people who love to make, to take pictures of their food and share their experiences. But for the, for the mass market consumer, they don't want, want to contribute. They want a recommendation. They don't want to spend time in your app doing some stuff. They just want to get a simple recon. Okay, what can I conclude from this experience? 
is that don't be afraid to fail. Be only afraid not to have an opportunity to learn. And the only way to learn is to try, to go out and try. And this is very easy again. Okay, so we went back to our assumptions and we figured out that all our competitors have the same problem, that uh, people, the loyal users are only the niche market users, not mass market consumers. And why is that? It's very simple. User-generated content takes years and years to generate before it's interesting, before it's interesting at the level that any consumer can use it. And we asked ourselves and our, and our consumers, how an ideal service should look like? And I said, it's very simple. It should work in any restaurant. It should have at least 10 dishes in each restaurant so we can choose from it. And you should have at least 10 votes per each dish so that you can re really trust the recommendation because it's one or two votes, maybe it's random. Okay, this would mean that for a city like San Francisco, we would need half a million reviews. For such successful services like Yelp or TripAdvisor, it took more than five years to generate this level of uh, reviews. We don't want to wait five years. <laughs> How can we do it faster? And we thought, okay, but wait a minute. There are already millions and millions of restaurants reviews on the web. And inside these reviews, there is already an information about dishes. Why can't we construct some artificial intelligence which would read these reviews and analyze them, understand what the people meant, and find automatically pictures and present them to a consumer in just one, one click? We actually can do that, why not? We can do that, but we need extra team members. We need to redesign the interface from scratch and we need some time for development. Can this stop us? You think, ask yourself, can anything stop you, you from your dream? I think the answer is no. So the conclusion from this is that don't be afraid of anything which takes to accomplish your dream. Maybe it's hiring some new people. Maybe it's firing some old ones. Maybe it's anything in your life. It's not difficult. Just understand what it takes to get what you want. And be only afraid to delay the decision because the time is what actually you can't compensate. So once you understand what it takes to do what you want, just go and do it. Okay, so we actually went and did it. So we hired some more people and we built this new technology which is highly scalable and already at the moment we have analyzed over 3 million of reviews just for two cities, New York and San Francisco. So, so this would allow us to give a really high quality recommendations as soon as we launch. And we are ready to add more reviews like around 100 million of new reviews covering US, Canada, Europe, and Australia. I just sh will show you a little bit how it works. So for example, you're at Osha Thai restaurant in San Francisco. You will open an application and it would uh, show you the places next to you. You would choose the one you are in and it automatically will tell you that it analyzed over 3,000 reviews for you and Pet Thai was liked by 200 people and this is how it looks like and the pumpkin curry was liked by this number of people and this is how it looks like. So your decision would be very easy. And I just want to finish my uh, talk with the one conclusion which actually summarizes all the previous conclusions. Don't be afraid to die because we all inevitably die. This is, this is like, this is the fate, you know? But be afraid not to leave. Because the only responsibility you have is to live, to pursue your dreams and make them come true. That's it. And I hope that you can learn from, uh, what, from my experience and from your own life these lessons that you should, nothing should ever stop you from your dreams. Thank you.